opinion. Amara, you've outlined some examples and your the framework that you use when you speak with interviewers or when you describe uh, these sessions. So uh, it will be great if you can walk us through a few examples and uh, we can loop back. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I have always found this framework very, very useful. Uh, it functions as like a mental checklist in my head that these are the as like whenever I'm asked, a, you, you will usually be asked really, really broad questions in interviews. And uh, in your brain, you need to know how to like, you know, break your answer down into parts so that you know that you've covered everything that you wanted to cover when you were answering a question and you don't walk out of an interview room, you know, thinking that, oh, you know, this is something very important about my XYZ project that I forgot to like talk to my employer about. So the framework that I use is called the STAR framework. It basically breaks your answer down into four parts. The first part is situation in which you basically quickly give them a rundown of the context or of the answer that you're about to give, the task that you were asked to perform, um, the action or the approach that you, that you use to perform a particular task and the overall results that you got in the end. So this, this acts as like a really, really useful checklist that you can use to answer questions. And then uh, in the next slide, I will show, I will give you an example of how to apply this in a real interview question. Yeah, so uh, the interview prompt that we are looking at here is that we have to give an example of like, for example, an employer asks, and this is a very, very popular question in interviews at very high frequency. I've been asked this question in almost any analytical uh, interview that I have given, is that give us an example of a project where you use data and how you were able to communicate your findings to a non-technical audience. When I was fresh out of grad school, the biggest analytical project that I had participated in or uh, had worked on was my caps, final year capstone project. So the way I broke down the answer was that first the situation in which I would explain to them that, you know, I was for six months, I was working on a capstone project that involved um, uh, analyzing prim uh, criminal justice data from the State Department of Corrections. The DOC was our client. And uh, we were asked to identify variables that were, you know, reliable predictors of violent crimes. And um, what was going to happen was that we were asked to present our findings to the head of statistics, who was a very, very technical guy, as well as the general management of that organization, who were non-technical folks. So again, this is a very good example of like, you know, a situation where we are asked to present our findings to both. So the specific task that we were asked to uh, perform was that we had to use the data provided by the DOC and um, convert it into a user-friendly dashboard that could be used by uh, different stakeholders. So again, the third part is the important part where you really, really describe your action and approach. And this is where you show, you show off your analytical skills. And so you will break, I, 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 bro, I, I would typically break down my action or approach into three parts. The first would be where I would explain to them about how I understood the data. The way I understood the data was that you identify the key data variables and then you prepare a very, very detailed data dictionary. And then of course, uh, a corresponding entity relationship diagram to, um, to, show, to really understand, to really make sure that we've understood how the variables that how the data that they've given to us is linked to each other. And then we really understood the business rules and processes. Um, of course, and then the second step is, um, of course, cleaning up the data. This is where you walk them through the, the techniques or the, the functions that you use to clean up the data, remove the duplicates, correct it, formatting. And then uh, over here, I would always mention that I used R to clean, uh, clean up the data and the functions that I use within R because this then signals to the employer that you know how to use R to do this particular task. And then uh, this, the third part is the most important part is where you tell them about how you analyze the data and how you use like different um, sort of modeling techniques and what were the different candidate models that you were using to analyze a particular task, uh, to analyze a particular problem and um, just name those very specific models that you used and in the end, which model did you end up picking over the others and why you picked that model. I think that's a very, very important thing to bring up to the employer. They need to know that you understand that uh, there's uh, an, an, an analytical problem can be solved in more than one way and you know how to pick within uh, between different alternative approaches. So I think these are three very important things that you need to show in your action and approach. And then of course you talk about your final results that what your key findings were, how you showcase them to a non-technical audience, what were the steps you took to make sure that they were understandable to a non-technical audience. And um, yeah, so this becomes a very, very important part. And over here, it is also very important to mention uh, the limitations of your ultimate findings, because I think uh, most employers are looking for that, that you understand that an analytical process 
uh, is messy and you the results and findings that you will have are, ne are never going to be perfect it is very very important to recognize its limitations and communicate them appropriately um, to your stakeholders so these are the things that we did and i think the slide also mentions um, that what were the specific steps we took to ensure uh, that our final results were suitable to a non-tech audience and in the case of my systems project, the three things that we did uh, were that we created metrics that measured the already existing KPIs that were given to us uh, by our client uh, in the language that was given to our, by, by our client so that when we showed them our final product, it was not something that uh, they didn't understand at all. And then we also told them about, you know, that getting there was a process. We would show an initial draft to a manager who worked for the company and we would get feedback and make changes. And then the third thing that I would mention here was that I would tell them that, you know, we try to keep our visualizations very, very simple uh, without piling on too much on one visual. And if we ever felt that there was too much on one graph or one chart, we would always split that into two. And so these were the things that I would talk about, you know, when I would be describing our final product. So yeah, another second question that I have is a, is a very interesting question that um, uh, have you ever been in a work situation in which your assigned task was ethically questionable and then how did you handle the situation? Then again, like using a similar framework, you would describe your situation. My situation is the same as before, that it was my systems project. I was working for the DOC and we were asked to analyze data that we received from the State Department of Corrections. So over here, the task part is very, very important because that is the ethically questionable part. So they, they had asked us to develop a model that would predict uh, a client's propensity for violence using existing data on race, gender, and age and recidivism. The reason why this was ethically questionable was because um, there is a strong bias in the original source of the data. So naturally, the model that we will develop using already biased data will also uh, give us biased results. And by biased results, I mean that it will be biased towards like a specific racial group. And uh, that is something that we had a problem with. So the way we approached the situation was that uh, we first communicated to our client that um, we find this task ethically questionable for these reasons and which is why we cannot do exactly what they're asking us to do but you obviously shouldn't end there and you should tell them that what is an alternative product that you can provide them with and how is that also of value so in our case we told them that we will use that data to build a dashboard that will clearly show them descriptive stats on the data that they provided us and then uh, mention clear caveats and limitations of whatever we are showing them using supporting literature so the final result that we ended up providing to our client was, of course, an interactive dashboard, which gave the management of the Department of Corrections insight into the client population being managed by them. And we recommended that they use the dashboard to specifically, like, you know, identify those biases that we had talked about and the reason why that task had become ethically questionable. So in the end, we did give them a product of value, but it wasn't exactly what they had asked us to do. Great. I think, Amara, that is so relevant, right, with the conversations around Black Lives Matter today. Yeah. The matters today that you know questions about um, ethical implications on the data are, are all well debated so it's good to have some kind of sensitivity since you are still living in this country and it it's good to uh, demonstrate this yeah, in, yeah. Particularly if you are becoming a data analyst in a public policy context, in more of you are of there, there's obviously there's always going to be like a conversation around ethics of the data that you are analyzing because ninety percent of the things that the context that we work in are sensitive and very political contexts. So you, I think this is a good question to keep in mind and have answers prepared for because this is very like very realistically this could happen to you in a work environment and this is something an employer could question you on, particularly given the political climate of the country right now.